DaVinci Resolve for iPad is truly a revolution for post-production. Customers will have the power of Hollywood post-production tools for editing and color correction literally in their hands, creating a whole new generation of creative editors and colorists. Compatibility with DaVinci Resolve 18 and Blackmagic Cloud mean that customers can collaborate on the same timeline with other editors or colorists, as well as audio engineers and VFX artists from literally anywhere in the world. I think it will be exciting to try out the new iPad version, and I can't wait to see how our customers use it. Their creativity will be mind-blowing. That was a quote from Grant Petty, the CEO of Blackmagic Design, the company that makes DaVinci Resolve. And I have to say, I agree with Grant. I think this has the potential to be a really, really big deal. But first, we have a lot of new details to talk about, details that have just been released today about Resolve on the iPad. Now, we have two main sources we're gonna be looking at. The first is the official release from Blackmagic Design. This is a press release, so it has some of the normal press release talk in there, but there's a lot of good info in here as well. Uh, that quote from Grant came from this. And right off the bat, we highlight that Blackmagic Cloud for collaboration. Uh, like I said in my last video, oh, this is gonna be a really, really big deal. Whereas you might think Resolve on the iPad will be great for like brand new editors hopping in for the first time, getting their feet wet. I think tools like this collaboration will really start to pull in some pros as well. And going on from there, it just says it will be available Q4 on the Apple in their uh, release video and on their website. They said end of this year as well. And it has confirmed it is a free download with an upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio for iPad available as an in-app project. And we're gonna talk about that more uh, on our other source. And even uh, one question we had was about whether this will be available anywhere other than the brand new M2 iPad Pros. And it will at least be available uh, on the previous iPad Pros with the M1 chip. We have this sentence, HDR is supported for customers using a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the M1 chip. The way this is worded kind of uh, leads me to believe that Resolve will at least be released on all M1 iPads, uh, but we don't know for sure. We know for sure it will be on the iPad Pro with the M1 chip, uh, pro maybe likely on the other M1s, but that doesn't necessarily mean it won't release on other versions of iPad, but again, we don't really know. Obviously, they want a good experience when you're working in Resolve, so it makes sense that they want as much power as they can push to it, like on these silicon chips. You have some information about how you can send to an external display, which will be really big for some of these color workflows. I can't, I can't believe the color page is coming on an iPad. And then immediately another big uh, question answered, it will open and create standard DaVinci Resolve projects. So you can create a project on iPad, send it to the full desktop version or vice versa. And then on top of that, you have the cloud workflow if you want it. And then it does specifically call out supported file formats, H.264, H.265, uh, ProRes and Blackmagic RAW. Then it has a lot of info generally about Resolve, uh, that quote from Grant and a few call out features. This is important, it does say that the two pages they have so far, the cut page and the color page are optimized for that 12.9 inch iPad Pro display. So even though all the functionality will still be there uh, on smaller displays, uh, they are designing it with that in mind. It'll use some of those same neural engine features uh, that are behind the studio uh, version on desktop as well. And of course we saw it working with the Apple Pencil and some other peripherals in the video, uh, external monitoring, uh, HDR, uh, and iOS 16 or newer. That seems great, super straightforward, but we have a second source. Before I saw people share screenshots, I had never even checked in on the Blackmagic Design uh, main Facebook page, but they have one, and on their post about Resolve on the iPad, they have some more information, including some really, really exciting stuff. First, it says it will initially feature the cut and color pages, and then it clarifies later that, at least at launch, it does not include Fairlight or the Fusion page because uh, they really have to dive in the code to make it work on the iPad, but that's something they plan to do. We will continue to work on these pages and will include them in the future. For something like the Fusion page, I am not sure all the changes that they will have to make to make it work on an iPad. I am very much looking forward to it. I can't believe they're bringing so much to the iPad. And then it also clarifies uh, that they're not bringing the edit page, but they talk a bit about why. That the edit page is not included as it was originally designed for large screens with a keyboard and a mouse. This makes it very difficult to move the iPad without changing it in a way that would cause problems for professional editors who rely on the edit page for their work. We expect the edit page to remain a desktop only page. I know this will absolutely uh, seem like they are trimming it back a whole lot, but I really believe that this move is made uh, with user experience in mind. Yes, you could uh, potentially always plug into an external display out of your iPad and use the full cut page, 
but they're putting Resolve on the iPad. They want it to work great on the iPad. But that does mean that they are going to continue to look at the cut page and, and, and beef it up a little bit. Let's see what they say. However, this means that the cut page needs more features so it can operate on the iPad when the edit page is not available. Until now, we focused on adding new types of features to the cut page because the edit page was always available. However, on the iPad, that's not the case. So we will be working hard to add more editing features to the cut page as soon as possible. These features will include enhanced audio support, keyframing, split edits, and more. We will release these updates as we add the features. So a lot of development is obviously ongoing, getting resolved on the iPad, uh, but this will also push new features back towards the full version. Uh, I expect lots of cool stuff to come to the cut page because of this. Now, one of the big pieces of information they posted on Facebook is their tentative price. They did say the app will be free, but they are going to have a DaVinci Resolve Studio for iPad. It's its own self-contained thing. We weren't sure in the past if uh, maybe a studio license on desktop, you could just use an activation and get it on iPad. We know even starting on just the color page, there are a lot of uh, studio effects happening in there uh, that presumably if they're bringing as much of Resolve as they can, they're bringing those to the iPad. But they say they expect this update, the DaVinci Resolve Studio for the iPad to cost 95 US dollars. And this is very interesting. And I think, I think pretty, pretty cool. Outside of some things like resolution above 4K or frame rate above 60, a lot of the specific uh, perks of Studio are individual effects on the color page, a few infusions, stuff like that, along with some hardware optimization. And even you get more for free on the current M1 systems, like that hardware and code, some of that stuff. But a lot of those like neural engine effects stuff, that's locked uh, behind the Studio version. So I will be very interested to see how many people are currently working on Resolve on a desktop using the free version, pick up an iPad, start working uh, concurrently on the iPad, maybe in the cloud project. Ooh, side note, I'm really curious whether you can do local collaboration on a network. The Blackmagic Cloud uses the same collaboration tools, but you don't need the cloud if you're like in the same network. Really interesting stuff. But my point is, can you buy Studio on the iPad, get access to some of those tools. I do think for just standalone effects, something cool like analog damage, you can always apply that in the free version, but it gives you that overlay, it will render with that overlay. So if you're using something like that, you would need to actually export on the iPad. But I'm curious about some other things. If you have Resolve free on your desktop, Studio on the iPad, and on the iPad, you create an object mask, you run the track, and then it's just living on a node there. If you then move on to another clip and let that update in the cloud collaboration system, what will show up in the free version of Resolve? This could potentially be cutting the cost of a lot of these higher and really cool uh, studio effects uh, by two thirds. But yes, you do need to buy an iPad. But with all these updates, it is a very exciting time. And like I've talked about uh, before on the About Us page on Blackmagic Design's website, it says leading the creative video revolution and stuff like this. Uh, makes it seem like they're taking that very seriously. Obviously, lots of questions left. A uh, big one for me is obviously like, will this allow like DR effects for like third party fusion effects? How does that work? Especially before uh, the standalone fusion is there. Uh, what's going on? Very excited for this app to come out. Very excited to get hands on. Of course, I want to make uh, lots of content about it. So stick around. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.